Steve Jew and MMA Mania. All right, Steve, go ahead. You're on with Dave. All right, the caveman Dave Rickles. How are you doing today, sir? Excellent, man. Great intro. Thank you. It's always good to talk to you, and I'm really looking forward to this fight you're going to have with Brennan Ward. It's another fight at welterweight, which compounds the success you had at Bellator 171 against Aaron Darrow. So how satisfying was that win? Oh, man. There's satisfaction. Getting a win at the hometown, nothing feels better than that. And when you were a completely maul a human being, another grown-ass man, you just maul him for three rounds. Until you knock him out. I mean, it was a one-sided fight, and it was a great night. I'm just going to say I drank whiskey and had a good night. Well, right on. You should always celebrate a big win like that in fashionable style. So what kind of whiskey was it? Do you even remember after all this time? <laughs> uh, well, typically I drink uh, Makers, man. I, I do love Makers. Makers and Jameson, those are my, like, go-to. I like McCollum myself, but it's a little expensive to drink on the regular. Yeah. I mean... You should try it. Have you ever had Angel's Envy? No, I haven't. Google it or whatever you got to do. I don't know. It's like the best whiskey I've ever had. It's a, it's a, it's actually really a bourbon, but. I'll check it out. But in the meantime, let me ask you, are you going to stay at welterweight now? Because are you're we having... talking fight stuff now? Yeah, yeah. We're getting back to fight stuff now. Are you staying at welterweight now that you've been having success with it and you're having another fight at welterweight? Yeah. You know, I've already. Man, I just I got I'm tired of like destroying my body for for nothing, really. I mean, uh and not for nothing. I don't wanna say that, but but it takes all the damn fun out of fist fighting a grown man in a cage. Like when you just have to like eat leaves for for eight man, my my eight to twelve weeks is like usually how long it took for me to get my weight down and like diligent diligently like focus like I had a man I bought a safe like let me tell you this is how bad like mind of a man gets when he's like that hungry is I bought a safe that I would put all of the foods into at night so that I wouldn't be able to break into it wow and that's man that's 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 like a that's a mental like that's like a, a mental that's an eating disorder uh yeah I just got I was through with that man I'm like dude I don't need to treat my body like this like Man, the only profession in the world where you just like, and they're like, hey, we'll burn 3,000 calories at this workout and then eat two pieces of lettuce. Like, what? <laughs> oh. So no okay. more eating twigs and berries for the caveman. You're getting back to the paleo diet with some nah, protein hey. here. Hey, that's right, man. We we got away from that, that gathering lifestyle. Now I'm hunting. I'm hunting. I'm a hunting prey. Right, and you're hunting Brennan Ward for this fight. So, what are your thoughts on him as an opponent? I think it's a great opponent, man. Like, uh, you know, to be honest, I feel like he's, you know, he's kind of a gatekeeper at 170, man. And, uh, you know, he's he's an OG of Bellator, too. Like, he's done some, he's had some great fights and this and that, man. And I think, I kind of feel I'm the same way. Like, so, I've, uh, man, it's just a great matchup, really. When you look at it, it's a really great matchup for us at 170. And, uh, you know, he, he likes to come out there and, and throw down and swing hard. Um, and I like to do the same thing, man. I'm more of a volume striker, but uh, volume and pressure. But, yeah, it's just it, it makes for a really great battle. You know, I am used to – There's no way it's going to be born. Right, and I'm used to him coming out there and having really exciting fights, but then in that last fight with Fernando Gonzalez, he went a little more conservative. He went for takedowns for two rounds, and then in the third round, he got caught trying to get one and got guillotined. So it was not a typical fight from him. Do you think he's going to go back to the old Irish bad boy fighting you? Yeah, dude. I mean, I think that's... Man, that is, oh, dude, to be honest, man, like that would be his best bet. Like That's his best bet of beating me. It's like just going out there and fucking bonkers. Uh, if he tries to fight me technically, I'm going to whoop his ass. <laughs> like just wipe the floor with him. So, uh, you know, I think they're, I'm sure his coaches are like, make this shit a dog fight, bro. So, yeah, I mean, and when we do that, it's like who's going to get who? Like who's going to catch who? Like at that point, like who's going to catch who at when? So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Well, I've got to think when it comes to the power, you probably figure you've got the advantage on him, so. Yeah, I definitely, uh, I, you know, man, I love to hit people. I sure do. <laughs> 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 and, uh, 
and uh yeah man i got i got some things for him like i've got a few tricks like that i think will work really well for him and, and this and that but you know i never really draw out some crazy game plan or anything like that like i just got some some moves i'd like to hit and uh, hopefully uh that'll make his head hit the floor so with this fight at welterweight and your commitment to staying at this weight and not having to do the crazy diet with the locked up safe full of food, how far do you want to take it? Do you want to go all the way to a title fight with Lima or maybe even McDonald if he takes the fight from him? Um, man, I just moved up to 170. Uh, I think this is a great introductory fight. Like, and then that just cascaded me into fights with Larkin and and Daly and Lima and and that sort of shit, you know? So there's a lot of other fun fights too, man. So we'll just see, see what happens. Yeah. I just, I honestly, I'm not sure who they'll match me with next. I'm just like excited to find out who's going to be next. Right. But it does seem to me when I look at your statistics and I think about your other fights, it seems to me like you were naturally a welterweight all along at six foot with a 72 inch reach. It's like, yeah, you were doing good at lightweight, no doubt about it. But this, this is like more your body type. Right. Yeah. And I feel like I lost, you know, I feel like I lost a lot that I didn't realize. I was, you know, at, you're like, Oh, drop the weight. If I can do it, let's do it. This will be, this will be great, man. I'll just be gigantic in there, man. Like you lose certain things too. Like, uh, so, uh, I'm just, I, I'm ready to be healthy, feeling good when I walk in the cage, man. And, uh, you know, last fight I did the same damn thing and, and look how that turned out. Now, speaking of being healthy, how's the training camp treated you? Any nicks and bruises, or are you coming out pretty good for this fight? Oh, uh, I'm honestly pretty good, man. Like, everybody, dude, I've been in the fight game for 10 years now, man. Dude, you are, there's always little things that bother you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like you, if you've actually been training hard for 10 years, like, You've got injuries that, like, just kind of are there, you know. But just like any other good athlete, you ignore them. Right. Or you take They a don't exist. They don't have power over me. Right. Or you just take a really long ice bath after a hard training session and numb it all down. There's a chance that I could be frozen, though. <laughs> and I can't risk that. But, but you're the caveman. <laughs> what would be true? That would mean nothing to you. I could... I could I'd, I'd wake up in 30, 25, and I'd be like, what happened? Did I fight Brennan Ward? Oh, <laughs> no, I got frozen. Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, if you woke up in 30, 25, you could just fight Fry and Leela for a slice of pizza. <laughs> slice of pizza and a six-pack of Mickey's. Yeah. Call it good. What are you going to do for an entrance this time? Because I know the caveman never disappoints when it comes to putting on a show. That's right, man. When the cameras hit me, it becomes a caveman show. And, uh, you know, they should honestly just, they should, at that point, take all of the, they need to make, like, this is the caveman show. They need to do logos. They need to do logo placement. Where Spike TV is, you put the caveman show. You do that, and we're going to see some greatness. It's going to be good, man. I've always got something planned. I'm always having fun. This is the best job I've ever had. Have more fun than most fighters I've ever seen when you come out to do it. Win or lose, you're always having a good time. Man, if you're going to do it just to be a fucking sourpuss at the end of the night, like, dude, that's the thing, man. Like, I just fight because it's enjoyable. Like, I just want to be in there doing it, like, and, and soaking it in, man, because not many people ever get a chance to do something like this, man, especially at this level. Um, I, I even tell, like, you know, amateur fighters and like, dude, you, even an amateur, like, you're doing something that almost nobody will ever do, which is really pretty badass. There's not a lot of people who can say they've stepped in a cage and had a fight. I, I for one, can't say that. So everybody that's an amateur that's had a fight has got one on me. And you got one up on you. And you got about 101 up on me. So I got to say kudos to you for <laughs> for always entertaining and always performing. And I really want to see how this fight at Bellator 185 turns out. So it's it's not a home fight. You know, that's the only bummer of it because we're used to you fighting in Mulvain, and I've seen you fight in Mulvain, but you got to go to Uncasville for this one. Yeah. Is that how you say that? 
<laughs> I'm pretty sure nobody's corrected me. <laughs> well, it could be either one, but Oom Casper. Nobody's corrected me, and I know uh, nobody's going to correct you. So you say it any way you want. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, man. Um, you know, I actually think it's me and my corners have been talking about like, man, we kind of miss hitting the road a little bit, you know, getting the weight. And uh, so it's going to be fun to just get out there and, and, and fight somewhere else. And from what I've heard a couple of the other fighters say, they have a pretty good casino, so maybe you'll get a chance to play a hand of poker or something. Well, I'll definitely join in on that. And I, I've actually been out there to the Mohegan Sun, uh, which is dope. So think about this. Hey, man, last time he was at Uncasville, Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun, knocked out Jordan Smith in 16 seconds. So Damn. 16 seconds. Of that. That's right. That was at 170. Yeah, that was all the way back at uh, Bellator 63, wasn't it? That was a, quite a while ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was a while back. <laughs> so it's kind of like homecoming for those fans who got to see that fantastic knockout. They'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember that guy. He was dope. Yeah, hell yeah. Well, the caveman's going to tear it up with Brennan Ward coming up here at Bellator 185. But as I always do, Mr. Wickles, I want to give you this time to shout out teammates, shout out sponsors, plug anything you want to plug, give the social media links, do all of that stuff. Go for it. I want to plug my 185-pound training partner, Chris Harris, to help me get ready for this fight. He was my Brennan Ward. Uh, he took a shit ton of punishment because of it. <laughs> And uh, he's he's a soldier though. He's really good. Um, and then my coach Andy Zerger, on it labs, future legend, rivetandeyelid dot com, uh, cigarperforator dot com, uh, lots of other companies I cannot think of right now. But they will be on the banner but that's the it. page. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> They'll be on. You'll be on the banner. You're gonna be uh, seen on the walkout. You're gonna be seen when I get my hand raised at the end of the night. So y'all be happy, okay? And for any of the other ones that didn't even make it there or get shouted out here, follow the Caveman 316, right? That's right. All right. David Rick, thank you so much for the time today. I really look forward to the Irish Bad Boy versus the Caveman at Bellator 185. It's going to be fun. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much, and thank you, Dan, as well.